pastors, seminarians, and saints who came to the Shincheonji online seminar. Welcome. I am Park Song Hoon, the presider for today. This seminar delivers the word that every believer wants to know, which is the word of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven hidden in parables in the 66 books of the Bible and the testimony of the reality that it has been fulfilled. Through the preceding seminars, all the words were logically explained and testified so that many believers were surprised at this and expressed that they wanted to become one in this word. Today's message is also being broadcasted simultaneously in many languages so that many people can understand the secrets of God's kingdom of heaven. We give thanks and glory to God, who has granted us the precious word of life, and we will begin by gathering our hearts and praying together. Father God, whom we are thankful and grateful, we give you thanks and glory for opening the way for all people in the world to come to heaven by testifying on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings to the whole world. Please lead this time of grace so that our spirits and souls become alive through your word that is like the precious water of life today. Please pour the Holy Spirit on the lips of the instructor who delivers the word so that everyone who hears it can understand the kingdom of heaven clearly and be filled with hope and grace. Father God, may you alone be glorified, and we pray that all the people in the global village will be filled with your boundless grace and love. We pray earnestly in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today, continuing from Lesson 9 from last time, you will listen to the words of Lesson 10, the figurative water, spring, and river. We will have a time to understand what water means in the Bible, as well as what the spring from which water comes out is, and what is a river flowing from a spring. Through these, we will understand the wonderful secrets of heaven hidden in them together. We will welcome the instructor, Kim Soo-young of the Matthias tribe, who will be testifying to the secrets and the reality. All pastors, seminarians, and saints around the world who walk the faith with the hope in heaven, it is nice to meet you. I am a center instructor, Kim Soo Young, and I was taught by the leader of the Matthias tribe among the 12 tribes of Shincheonji. Our tribe leader learned the word from the chairman of Shincheonji, Chairman Lee Man Hee. Thank you so much for attending the Shincheonji online seminar, Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and Their True Meanings, today. Through this seminar, I hope that you will come to understand the true meanings and reality of the parables of the secrets of heaven that Jesus had spoken of, and all become those who can partake in heaven. Now, we will begin the word for today. The title of the lesson today is Lesson 10, The Figurative Water, Spring, and River. In the Bible, there are physical water, springs, and rivers, and those that are spiritual. The figurative water, spring, and river have a spiritual meaning under the guise of a physical one. If we first look at the true meaning of the parables through the Bible, the figurative water represents the Word, and the figurative spring refers to a pastor or a temple, and the figurative river means the hearts of disciples and evangelists. 
I think that all of you pastors are well aware of these too. However, I would appreciate it if you listen carefully to my explanation of the figurative water, spring, and river that I will be sharing today. Now, let's find out together why the parables have such meanings through the Bible. Let's read the verse with a parable, John chapter 3, verse 5. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Amen. Yes, you have read well. If you look at the verse, it is said that no one can enter the kingdom of God, which is the kingdom of heaven, unless he is born of water and the Spirit. In other words, if one is born of water and Spirit, the person can enter the kingdom of heaven. Then, in order to enter heaven, you must first know what this water refers to. In the Bible, there is the real physical water, and also there is spiritual water under the guise of physical water. The figurative water, that is the secret of heaven, is spiritual water that is likened unto physical water. The water that allows people to enter the kingdom of heaven in John chapter 3 verse 5 is not an actual physical water. Then, in order to understand what this spiritual water means, let us first look at the properties of the physical water. Water provides life to living creatures, and secondly, water has a property of washing away dirty things. Through this reasoning, let us now verify what the figurative water is. Let's read the words of Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 1 and 2. Listen, O heavens, and I will speak. Hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching fall like rain, and my words descend like dew, like showers on new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. Amen. If you look at Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 1 and 2, God said to the heavens and the earth, My teaching is like rain, and my words are like dew. He compared the Word of God to water that is like rain or dew. Also, in Amos chapter 8 verse 11, it is said that the state without the Word of God is a state of thirst that is without water. Let's read Amos chapter 8 verse 11. The days are coming, declares the Sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land, not a famine of food or a thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Amen. Yes, you read well. Looking at Amos chapter 8 verse 11, he is not talking about physical water, is he? The absence of water is said to be the absence of the Word of God. So we can tell that God's word is compared to as water. Then, why did God compare his words to water? It is very easy to understand if you look at it based on the logic of the world. All living things on this earth are given life through the rain that falls down from the sky. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 6, it is said that people are like grass. Just as physical grass gains life through the rain from the sky, our souls and spirits can also receive life through the words of God in heaven. 
And so God's word is compared to as water. And water also has the property of washing away dirty things, right? In John chapter 15 verse 3, Jesus said to his disciples that you are already clean because of the word I had spoken to you. This means that Jesus had made his disciples clean with the word that is like water. Looking at what Jesus had cleansed from his disciples, in 1 Peter 1, verse 22, it is said that the souls are purified with the truth that is the word of God. Just as water cleanses people's bodies, Jesus cleansed the souls of his disciples with these very words. Therefore, in John chapter 3, verse 5, which is the verse with the parable, the water that allows us to enter the kingdom of heaven is the figurative water and it refers to the word. Wouldn't it be really great if we could drink the water that allows us to enter heaven and become clean? But who will give this water? And who will be able to drink this water? In John chapter 4, we can see that Jesus had given that water. The contents of John chapter 4 is about the conversation that Jesus had about water when he had met the Samaritan woman. In John chapter 4, verses 7 to 14, Jesus said to the Samaritan woman that if she had asked him for water, he would have given her living water. And he said that those who drink the living water, which is the water that Jesus gives, will never thirst, and that it will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Let's read John chapter 4, verse 14. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Amen. The spring of water that Jesus told us to drink, which makes you never thirst, and will be welling up to eternal life is, of course, not physical water. This water that Jesus gave means the word, which is spiritual water. Jesus was sent by God and preached the truth, which was the word of God. And those who heard the word of truth and believed in Jesus could gain eternal life, correct? Because these words of Jesus are the spiritual water that allows us to enter the kingdom of heaven and have eternal life, Jesus said that His words are the springs of water that is welling up to eternal life. And Jesus said that He would give the water to those who are thirsty. Let's read John chapter 7, verses 37 to 38. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Amen. It says here that if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. A believer who hopes for heaven and eternal life must be thirsty for the spiritual water, which is the Word, and come to Jesus to drink the water that He gives in order to enter into heaven, right? Also, it says that if one drinks the water that Jesus gives and believes in Jesus, that springs of living water will flow from within Him.
It means that if you drink the spiritual water and believe in Jesus, then you can reach heaven and eternal life. The word will flow from you, and it will be able to spread the water of life. Pastors, seminarians, and saints who hope for heaven and eternal life. Wouldn't it be really great if we drink these words of the water of life, are born again, understand the Bible clearly so that we can enter the kingdom of heaven and become these rivers of living water and preach this word as well? One good news is that in the book of Revelation, which is fulfilled to us today, it says that we will be given this water of life. Let's read Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come, and whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Amen. Yes, you read well. In this verse, the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Who are they inviting to come? Yes, that's right. They are inviting those who hear, those who are thirsty, and those who wish to come. Why are they telling them to come? They say that they will give this water of life. So they are calling them to come to receive this water of life. When these words of revelation are fulfilled, the words of the water of life appear, and we can drink these words of the water of life. We should be able to clearly understand then the prophecies of the four Gospels of the New Testament and even the words promised in the book of Revelation and be able to enter the kingdom of heaven, right? However, it is said that this water of life is given to those who are thirsty. We must become true believers with a thirsty spirit, thirsty for the knowledge about what the secrets of heaven are, so that we can search for the word of the water of life find it, and be able to drink from it. And in Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 and 2, it says that the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flows from the throne of God and of the Lamb, who is Jesus. If you follow up along this river of the water of life, you will find the throne of God and of Jesus. If we want to go to heaven where God and Jesus are, we must follow God's word, which is like the water of life. And if you go to Revelation chapter 22, verse 14, you can see that God is in the holy city. And this is the kingdom of heaven, right? It is saying that in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, we must wash our robes. So, how are we able to wash our robes in order to enter heaven? In John chapter 17, verse 17, Jesus said, Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As seen here, in order to be sanctified, it means to become holy by obeying to the truth that is God's word, which is to wash the robes. I hope that everyone will be able to enter the kingdom of heaven, the holy city where God resides, by meeting this word like the water of life and having your souls become alive and cleansed. Up to now, we have examined about the water of God. Next, let's take a look at Satan's water, which you should not drink from. First of all, Satan's water is the water of falsehood that we should not drink, which corrupts and kills our souls and spirits. No matter how clean the water is, if even only one drop of poison is mixed in the water, it would become undrinkable poison, right? 
Satan's water is like the muddy water, the sea water, or the poisonous water that became undrinkable, the undrinkable words because of the dirty things that were mixed in with the original water of God. If you look at Isaiah chapter 1 verse 22, it says that the choice wine is diluted with water. Since the word of God, which is like wine, is mixed with falsehood, it is no longer the pure word of God. Likewise, if the pure words of God are mixed with men's thoughts or men's teachings, those words are no longer the words of God. But instead, it becomes a mixture, the falsehood of Satan, the devil, which are lies. And that is why, in John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus said to the pastors of that time that there is no truth in them. Whenever they speak, they speak their native language, which is not the word of God, but the lies that were mixed in with their own words, calling it their native language, which is the lies that they were speaking. In this way, the words were mixed with men's words, and this is falsehood. This is Satan's water that we should not drink from. You saints as well, when you read the Bible, if you learn according to men's thoughts or the, by the doctrines that are not based on the Bible, it is like drinking filthy water that pollutes your soul and spirit, and it is like washing your body with dirty water. I hope that all of you who are listening to these words will always have a clean soul and spirit with the water of life that is as clear as crystal promised in the book of Revelation. Next, let's look at the figurative spring. In the Bible, there are physical springs that appear and there are also spiritual springs under the guise of the physical springs. The spring in Zechariah chapter 13 verse 1 the verse with the parable that you're about to read speaks about a spiritual spring likened unto a physical spring. Let's read Zechariah chapter 13 verse 1. On that day, a fountain will be opened to the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. Amen. In Zechariah chapter 13 verse 1, it says that on that day, a fountain will be opened that will wash away the sins and impurity. Of course, physical springs cannot wash away sin. This is referring to a spiritual spring. To understand this spiritual spring, let's take a look at its physical characteristics first. First, a spring refers to a place where the rainwater from the sky springs up from the earth after it is absorbed. In other words, a spring is a place, the source of water. In the same logic, the spiritual spring is the pastor and the temple that receives the water of the word that is rained down by God from heaven and delivers the word on this earth. In John chapter 4, verse 14, which we saw earlier, the water that Jesus gives is a spring of water that springs up, welling up to eternal life. You listened earlier that the spring of water welling up to eternal life is not physical water, but it is the Word of God. Jesus, who gives the spring water, is also a spiritual spring then, who is a pastor who delivers the spiritual water, that is, the Word. Because our sins can be forgiven through the words of Jesus, and so we can live eternally in heaven, the reality of the spring that washes away the sins and impurity in Zechariah chapter 13 verse 1 was referring to Jesus.
So the true meaning of the figurative spring in the Bible is a pastor from whom the water of the word comes out from, and it is also his temple. I hope you can understand this. However, just as there are two kinds of waters, the water of God and the water of Satan, there are two kinds of spiritual springs. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 11 and read. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. Amen. It is said that the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. The mouth of the wicked is a fountain of death that drains the poison. In this way, the fountain is divided into the fountain of God, which gives life, and a fountain of Satan, which kills the soul. First, regarding this fountain of God, in Revelation chapter 7, verse 17, it tells us that Jesus the Lamb will become our shepherd and lead us to the springs of living water. These words are telling us that when the words of Revelation are fulfilled, that there will be springs that testify to the words of the water of life, that is, the shepherd, the pastor, and the temple. And he promised that Jesus would become our shepherd and that he would lead us to the springs of living water, to the place where the words of the water of life come out from. On the contrary, in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 17, the spring of Satan is a spring without water. What does it mean that there is no water? It is the spring without God's word, meaning a pastor who does not have the word of truth, and that is expressed as a spring without water. In John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus said to the pastors of that time that they were telling lies because there was no truth inside of them. And that since there was no truth in them, that they speak their native language. This shows the spring without the truth or without water is a spring of Satan. Also, in Revelation chapter 8, verses 10 to 11, it is recorded that at the time of the fulfillment of the book of Revelation, a great star will fall from the sky on the springs of water, and because of that, a third of the waters will become undrinkable bitter waters, and many people will die from this water after drinking from it. The star that falls from the sky on the springs of water here does not belong to God who is in heaven. It is referring to the one belonging to Satan. And since pastors who are like springs become part of Satan and begin to preach falsehood and lies, many people's spirits will die as a result. I hope that all those who wish for heaven and eternal life will become the true believers at the time of the fulfillment of revelation, those who are guided by the Lamb and be able to find the spring of living water and not the spring of Satan. Next, let's see what the figurative river means. There are real physical rivers, and there are spiritual rivers under the guise of physical rivers. The river in the parable of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven is a spiritual river under the guise of a physical river. The physical characteristic of the river is the path in which the water flows as shown here in the photo. If water spiritually means the word, 
The way this word is delivered is the spiritual river. In other words, the hearts of the disciples and evangelists who receive the word from the pastor and preach it are spiritually referred to as rivers. If we look more closely at this, in John chapter 7, verses 37 and 38, which are the verses for the parable of the river, it is said that since the disciples listened to Jesus' words and believed in Him, that the rivers of living water will flow from within them. Jesus, who was a spring, gave the water of the word to his disciples, and he was telling them to spread the word that they had received to the whole world, which is like the sea. In other words, when they received the words from Jesus, the spring, and when they understood it, the word would flow from them like a river, meaning that they would act as a river that delivers the word to the whole world that was like the sea. The true meaning then of the figurative river is the heart of the disciples and the evangelists. 2,000 years ago, the believers of that time were able to drink the word which was like the water of life and enter the kingdom of heaven through the disciples of Jesus who became the river of the water of life. It is said that when the book of Revelation is fulfilled, the river of the water of life will appear so that we can drink and go to heaven. Let's read Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Down the middle of the great street of the city, on each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Amen. It says that the river of the water of life flows from the throne of God and of the Lamb who is Jesus. The water of life that flows from the throne of God and of the Lamb is the Word of God. But seeing that there is the river of the water of life that flows, there are disciples and evangelists who deliver the Word of the water of life. This shows that today, the words of the water of life will flow from the pastor who is like a spring, who is a throne of God and Jesus. Then the hearts of the disciples and evangelists who receive the word and perceived it first become the river through which the word of the water of life is delivered. I hope that you will meet this word of the water of life and that your spirit and soul becomes alive. And you'll be able to be part of the family of God who will enter the kingdom of heaven after washing your robes cleanly. Then let's summarize the word for today. The figurative water in the Bible is the word. The water that God gives is the truth, which is the word of God, and the water that Satan gives is the falsehood, which is the word of Satan. The figurative spring from which the water of the word comes out from is the pastor and the temple that preaches the word. The spring of God is the pastor and the temple that preaches the truth. And the spring of Satan is the pastor and the church that preaches the words of Satan, which are the lies and falsehood. Lastly, the figurative river is the heart of disciples and evangelists. Disciples and evangelists who receive and preach the word from God's pastor preaches the word which is the water of life. But on the contrary, disciples and evangelists who receive and preach the word from Satan's pastor delivers the lies. Pastors, seminarians, and saints who wish for heaven and eternal life I pray that when the book of Revelation is fulfilled, that you will receive the blessing to hear the word of the water of life 
and be guided to the springs of living water to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Also, if we do not understand the parables, the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, there will be no heaven, no eternal life, nor salvation. As there is a saying about the water that gives eternal life to those who drink it every day, one sip after another, I pray that as you listen to each lesson, that you drink one lesson one after another in this seminar, that you become the family of God to reach heaven and eternal life. Next time, in Lesson 11, we will examine about the figurative sea, fisherman, net, fish, and ship. In the Bible, it is said that the water of the Word of God comes out of a spring, becomes a river, and when it flows into the sea, the sea water becomes fresh. What does the sea that becomes fresh refer to? Aren't you excited to hear about it? The instructor who will deliver the message next time is a very special and a very fun instructor. I pray that you will receive much grace through the words of Lesson 11 next time. Finally, we are one in God and Jesus. Let us all shout together, We are one. Let us pray. Holy Father God, to whom we are thankful, we thank you for your grace and love in being together with us. We give you all the gratitude and glory for your grace for allowing the Shincheonji Online Seminar, the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings to be held in the entire world. Today, once again, we had a time to wash our robes clean and to have our souls become alive through the words that we have received which are the precious water of life and we were able to come closer to heaven. We ask that you provide your grace even more abundantly to all the believers who listen to this word around the entire world. And may you move the hearts of the people and grant a larger grace in each lesson for the remaining time. Watch over them and lead all of them to heaven. And allow all of the people who listen to become the trumpets to deliver this word that they have heard. We have prayed earnestly with gratitude in the name of Jesus who led us from death into life. Amen. Thank you for listening all the way to the end. Now, what was the true meaning of the figurative sea? Have you met the net that leads you to heaven? Those of you who have listened to the seminar will be able to say, Oh, I have met this net. Revelation chapter 8 verses 8 to 9 says that a third of the ships will be destroyed. What was the figurative ship? Now is the time when everyone can perceive this word that is revealed plainly by God. Testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. Today we have shared the word of Lesson 10, the figurative water, spring, and river. Wasn't it a time of grace through the word? Believers all over the world may have different nationalities, races, languages, or genders, but all share the same sincere heart longing for the word of God. We believe that we are one in the word of God's love and truth. So, in order to become one in the word, seminaries and pastors around the world have come to sign an MOU with Shincheonji, and many MOUs are being formed. If you have any further questions about Shincheonji Church and the word, Please feel free to contact us anytime by email or phone. We will kindly inform you in detail. Next time, 
you will hear the testimony about Lesson 11, the figurative sea, fishermen, nets, fish, and ship. We ask that you be with us until the end in the continuing of the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. Lastly, I would like to thank the pastors, seminarians, and saints from all over the world who came and made this event great. With this, we will conclude all of the programs for today and give the prayer that the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we have forgiven those who sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you very much to God's family for being here with us.